Welcome everybody, Doug and Alea again. And in this session, we want to talk about what it means to hold a safe container in emotions and holding a neutral stance. And I want to start by telling a story that happened to us as a couple last Saturday. And I'll, I'll give you my what my experience was and then Alea will take off on it. Um, so we're sitting here and although you're looking at Alea, under, but beneath the camera where you can't see it, she's got a leg that's all in a brace and bundled up. She, we were skiing six weeks ago and she tore her ACL. So she had her ACL repair surgery a week ago today. Uh, and the surgery went fine and she's gonna be, do, be just fine, except that for the first 24 to 36 hours, she was in really deep pain. And uh, finally, we got permission from the medical people to up the dosage of the painkiller that she was supposed to take hydrocodone. So instead of taking one cap, she took two caps, which ameliorated the pain, which was a good thing, <laughs> but then triggered a whole bunch of other stuff in her because it's a very potent painkiller. So. As I was coming off the hydrocodone, big emotional detox yeah, so she release. Has big emotional meltdown i'm in the other room and all of a sudden she starts to cry and so i come in and and i actually literally lie down next to her and put my arms around her and she for five minutes she just she just had this meltdown and in the meltdown she had a lot of anger coming out and a lot of shaming me uh, on a whole bunch of stuff none of it was really true but this is just stuff that she was processing and I ethic labeled her. In other words, I reflected back her emotions as she was having them. I was totally non-reactive. You were completely neutral. Completely neutral. It wasn't easy to hear this stuff from someone you love, but I recognized that we were going through a process here and it really wasn't, she didn't really believe what she was saying, but the emotions were talking. And so we, we she processed and processed and got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And I just sat there and reflected back her emotions and didn't try to fix anything and didn't run away and didn't try to get defensive or justify or do anything other than just to be present. And finally, she got to the bottom of it all. And tell us what happened. Well, you keep going and then I'll... Okay, well, what happened was she was going through all of this stuff. You know, I was the cause of every single awful thing that had happened to her. <laughs> basically <laughs> that was the story that i needed to go to to, to trigger all these right, huge she had emotions. to go through all of this stuff finally she gets through all that stuff and because i was holding a very safe container for her to process the emotions she finally says oh it's the hydrocodone this is a dark dirty energy and that's what's causing all of this and so she was able to look at the look at the energy of the hydrocodone and say this is really dark stuff no more i'm done with this and within 30 seconds, she cleared it and came back to reality and was normal again and has taken a painkiller, taken a Tylenol or two, but, but basically stopped all the painkillers and the pain went away. Uh, and, and the pain was going away. So, you know, for those 48 hours, pretty intense pain dosed on the hydrocodone. And then Saturday morning took half a tab, but by Saturday afternoon, my body started detoxing detoxing the hydrocodone and probably also the anesthesia because it was general anesthesia. And so I started going into these huge emotions and trying to link the emotions with a story and conjuring all of the stuff that was completely and totally irrelevant, unrealistic, not true, but I had to link it into a story and create a reality that conjured big emotions. And then halfway through it, I realize like I'm just in this emotional wave and I start looking at it from a slightly different perspective and realize, oh, I'm in an, um, I am in a physical, energetic and emotional detox experience, getting all of the chemistry of the drugs out of my body. And I reflected with Doug later the next day, the following day, recognizing that there were three stages that we will go through when we're in an emotional detox where we're wanting to change our vibration, detox a particular experience, detox chemistry out of our body. 
is we will only process emotions when we're in a really safe, neutral space. And for the first time, as I was processing those emotions, I felt this incredible container that Doug was holding. And it was this, it was so neutral, so quiet, so calm. There was no soothing coming from him. There was no defensiveness. There was no retreat. There was no fixing. It was a solid, quiet container. He did a verbally affect label. You're really upset. You're grieving. You're angry. You're afraid. All of that, which then helped me go deeper. But the emotions were almost like an echolocation. And I would let the first phase of emotions go. And then as the emotions emitted, it was like I was echolocating. Is this a safe space for me to go deeper? If there was no reaction, that's a yes. I am safer to go deeper. So then the next wave of emotions came, which was shaming him, which has nothing to do with him, but that was the deeper layer. Still using the emotions to echo locate, shaming him, still no change in the container. Oh, great. That means I can go even deeper. Then went to the third phase of allowing for the emotions to emote echo locating again, now the release, now the clearing, now the change of the vibration, now the detoxification. Oh, and then on the other side of it, and it probably only took about five to seven minutes, not long. But I could only go through those three phases. And this is a fairly unusual experience, but it's good to go through emotions because the body uses emotions to evolve, to shift, to change its chemistry, to detox. But I could only have gone through those three phases had he been holding a really safe container. Now, sometimes we talk about guides and angels and they can hold a safe container, but the skill set of being able to validate somebody's emotions, not be attached to their emotions, not take responsibility for their emotions, not even try to cha change or soothe their emotions, enables you to learn how to hold this incredible container for yourself, for your body, for another person, to go through this incredibly healing process using their emotions, but we use our emotions to echo, echo locate. Are we safe? Are we safe? If we are not safe, we will not go into a deeper layer of healing. So this is a huge skill set to learn of learning how to validate the emotions of another, especially when we're empaths and we're feeling the emotions of another, we'll naturally want to fix and change and we're in their stuff and we might not even realize that we're in, in their stuff. And so I was just thinking about all these skill sets of the empathic sensitivity, the awareness around that, the empowered empath course, the emotional competency course, and how it enabled us to have a very powerful, healing, gentle, sweet, loving experience in those seven minutes as I was coming off of hydrocodone and anesthesia that could have ruined, crushed some couples. And so tools that can help you heal, grow, evolve, detox, and hold an even clearer stance inside yourself. Doug, any other reflections on that? So the, you're probably thinking out there, wow, where do I find somebody that can do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> I want a Doug. <laughs> yeah, well, it takes, you know, it takes a lot of practice to be able to do that. I mean, yeah. I, Leia said she thought it was a sweet moment. It was not a sweet moment for me at all. It was intense. Um, and it's only because of years and years and years of training as a peacemaker and a mediator and being teaching this material for to many people over in many different environments that I was comfortable holding that kind of space. Um, it was hard. It was hard. I mean, it wasn't hard to do. I knew what to do, but it was hard to hear the words. Because if I hadn't been in that neutral place, they would have been very hurtful. Right. Uh, so the, I think this, the, the how of it all is to start learning how to reflect, how to become self-aware and reflect the emotions of another and, how, and become self-aware of your own emotions through self-affect labeling. Uh, and that's where you start. And it's like, a, it's like anything else. The more you practice it, the better you get at it. If you're looking for another person to help you with this, in other words, you need a partner to listen, then, then you should recruit a, a trusted friend or a partner and start studying all of this 
as a pair because uh, you can practice you can practice this on each other over and over and over again and you can do you can make some really wicked role plays and if you if you want role plays that are pretty tough <laughs> email us at, at uh, let's see I'm trying to think of the I think Doug told support not. it support it empath that help I think will work okay. um, and we can, you know, we can get into a dialogue about how to practice what kind of practice exercises <laughs> you can use to do this stuff but once you master this skill everything changes and so profoundly healing for the people that are in your life that have have a moment have an emotional moment then you're in a place from from the perspective of the listener you're in a place where even though i was being attacked i wasn't upset i wasn't angry i didn't feel resentful um i wasn't afraid you know i was i was dead neutral and you didn't feel traumatized and i didn't feel traumatized afterwards uh, which is huge which is a pretty major pretty major accomplishment something this intense so you can do it you just have to want to do it it's not difficult to learn but it, this is the kind of thing that that can be done and i think the reason we're sharing this fairly intimate story between the two of us with everybody is to just show you that it can be done and even in a relationship like ours when it gets stressed with an injury that we still have the kinds of we can still have the kinds of moments that a lot of people experience way too frequently and yet get through that experience very gracefully and that if this is something that appeals to you then you can learn how to do this there is a way there is a way and it works mm -hmm. it's miraculous in the way that it works and it makes um, having emotions less scary because there is a container where you can have emotions, can shift, can feel deeply, but not lose yourself in the journey. And not be injured. Right. Not be psychically or psychologically injured by strong emotions. Yeah. It's, it's the difference between a knife, a hot knife going through a, a stick of butter which leaves a deep wound and that hot knife going through a pan of cold water there's a little pssst, steam a little puff of steam and that's it nothing else and where would you rather be you'd rather be the stick of butter or the pan of water and i think the greatest challenge too is that in the last few years or decade or two decades or 100 years or 50 years there have been a lot of um conversations, tools, practices, books, talking about communication. And you may have tried a lot of different ways of communicating in a different way, holding yourself in a different way, and maybe it worked, maybe it didn't work. And so at a societal level, we might feel a little jaded and we might think, well, that's not gonna work for me. And well, that doesn't work because nothing's worked and I've tried everything. But over the last decade, Doug and I have committed our lives, our relationship, our work, our service, our work with others, to really finding practical tools, practical steps, the how, step one, step two, step three, breaking it down into teeny tiny little bite-sized pieces to give others the similar tools that we use on a daily basis that really brings incredible peace and calm and connection and safety and support, no stress, uh, well, very little stress, and if it is stress, it's momentary, and then you come back to your center. Our passion is to share that with others, and it does work. I'm an impatient person, and I like having things work right out of the gates. So um, feel free to check out some of the tools that we have, the book Deescalate. I have a book called Seven Cups of Consciousness, but maybe start with Deescalate. Doug has a course on emotional competency. I have a course called Empowered Empath, and we'll share the links below this YouTube. Anything else, Doug? No, I think we're complete. Okay. Have a great evening, everyone. And that's a wrap. Okay, I'll unpin. <laughs>